Have you ever had a spiritually transformative experience? The reason I wrote my book, Secrets of a Metaphysical Flight Attendant, and put out my course, The Mega Manifestation Method, is because I had one in my 20s. I've talked about it a lot in my videos. And in this video, I want to talk to you about some of the things that you can expect to happen after the spiritual awakening that might kind of surprise you. They did me when I went through it. Um, the first thing that happened was I went from being trapped in this three-dimensional vibration of hypnotic state and just, you know, feeling rather powerless even though I was studying a lot of metaphysics and I was manifesting, I still didn't feel completely free of fear in certain areas like my health. And so I manifested a bad diagnosis called cancer, early cancer, but it was still pretty scary. And I wanted a spiritual healing. So I went to a healer and I went from being trapped in this three-dimensional frequency to awakening to a higher level of consciousness tapping into a place where we are infinite beings capable of changing our beliefs by just flipping a switch and going from fear to freedom. Problem diagnosis to perfect health. That's what I did. And I was able to do that many times throughout my life when I needed a solution. You can use it in all areas of life once you find that level of consciousness that is above the physical. And it's you, it's part of you. You are a multidimensional being. And some of the things that might happen afterwards, though, are what are very interesting. For three days, I've told you I walked around in an altered state of consciousness, seeing things from a whole different angle. And I felt like a new person. I felt like I was reborn and I was. I opened up to my authentic self. The um, Christ consciousness met me right where I was as a human and um, freed me from that mental anguish and suffering that I was going through as a result of hearing something I didn't want to hear. Now, I thought that everyone would be interested after this happened to me. I moved back to the East Coast where I'm from. I was living in California when this happened to me. And I found out people weren't so interested. And that's because we all live in our own mental reality. And unless we hear something that is useful to us or we're ready to hear, because we're all programmed into believing in the 3D world with our senses, until we're ready to open up to the possibility that there's so much more, we just ignore it. We're, we're not interested. So that was kind of shocking to me. I remember flying on an airplane to go to Hawaii with my parents and I was sitting beside my mother telling her what had happened to me. And I saw her just get sort of confused by it. Um, it, it did not register. She, was, she had an open mind, but that just wasn't her thing. So. Um, she found ways to rationalize that, you know, maybe I didn't really get a bad diagnosis or whatever. But I learned that once you find that pathway to your higher self and the Christ consciousness, you can tap into it over and over and over again when you need to. And it frees you from feeling like you're living in total fear. So <clears throat> some of the other after effects of a spiritual transformative awakening, you might feel uncomfortable in the job that you're doing. I know I got to a point where I thought, do I really want to be a flight attendant forever or should I try something else? So I took a leave of absence and I tried real estate and financial planning and found out it wasn't really for me. And I was so glad to go back to flying because I really appreciated that, after that the freedom, the ability to travel the world and talk to people from all different cultures and find out that basically we're all the same all over the planet in so many ways. And we can all have a good time with each other if we really want to. That was one of the things I really loved about my job. Um, I found out though, that if you're 
talking about your spiritual awakening, it can turn people off. So you kind of keep things to yourself unless people want to hear something. You're always available to share information, but you don't hit people over the head with it because they're not interested. They're not ready or it's just not part of their paradigm. So you learn that um, you only talk to people that are tuned into what you're talking about on that level. Not that you don't have friends that are operating from all different mindsets, but um, it's always nice to meet like-minded people, isn't it? So you seek out people that are on that level of consciousness that you can communicate with. And um, you learn that we're all on our own journey. You never know when this thing is going to happen where your thought will just open up And I've studied many, many, many writings from different mystics and mystery schools to find out similarities to what happened to me and um, how it happens for other people. And I've learned that people all over the world have these mystical experiences and spiritual awakenings. And maybe we come here just to experience that. That's that was my thing. I was a seeker. So I wanted to find out what are we doing here? And if you ask, you will get the answer somehow, some way. The universe and your higher self will line up to present you with a situation, could be a problem that you have to solve. And there's no 3D solution that's desirable. So you take the leap of faith and you trust that God can do anything. And once you do that and you have the experience, then you know that you're living on a much different level of consciousness. And it's very nice. <laughs>